Dr. Diego Gomez is a researcher at Ontario Veterinary College, and he has been recently part of a research study on the equine herpes virus. Welcome, Dr. Gomez, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jackie, for the invitation. With several strains of equine herpes virus making the news, when do horse owners need to be concerned about EHV and how do they protect their horses? Okay, let me start by saying that equine herpes viruses are viruses that can be found in most of the horses all over the world. Almost all horses have been infected with equine herpes virus and most of them do not have any problem, no serious problems. But it is also known that some of these viruses can, can cause uh, respiratory disease and neurological disease. So equine herpes virus is a contagious and spread by direct contact from one horse to another horse or by contaminated nasal secretions. It is important to know that this virus can also spread indirectly through the contact with physical objects uh, that are contaminated with the virus. Also, the air around the horses can be contaminated with infectious viruses, and therefore it's good always to maintain a good distance between one horse and another horse. So owners should be always vigilant about possible clinical signs of equine herpes virus. Those clinical signs include fever. And uh, those horses that develop respiratory disease, they usually have nasal secretions. Uh, they have fever and swelling of the limbs. And some of horses can also develop neurological signs with or without respiratory signs. And sometimes the only Premonitory signs for those horses that develop neurological form of equine herpes virus is fever. So if owners detect any of those clinical signs, they should consult with their veterinarians and uh, pursue testing for equine herpes virus. Good to know. And are cases of EHV on the rise or are we just hearing more about them lately in the press? My opinion is that both the number of cases and outbreaks associated with herpes virus infection appear to have increased lately. And it is likely that it's because the number of events for performance horses uh, have also increased. So the, the, the opportunity for a horse to get exposed to other horses and to get exposed to infectious diseases is higher. So it's very likely that we have a, a raise on the number of cases. But also, these days, with all social media, is it easy for owners to communicate with other owners about new outbreaks, new cases around the province, and also for veterinarians to communicate with other veterinarians about those um, outbreaks. So, in conclusion, both more cases and um, social media facil facilitating the communication between owners and veterinarians. Great. Um, yeah, of course, we always put out news when we find out of an outbreak at Equine Guelph as well. So communication is key. <laughs> All right. I understand your study compared nasal microbiota from 10 horses that were infected with EHV1 uh, to that of a healthy control group. And these were all from a farm in Ontario that was experiencing an outbreak. Um, what were the findings? Yes, this study uh, was a collaboration with some other faculty from OBC, Dr. Scott Wiss, Dr. Luis Arroyo, and Dr. Brandon Lee. And what we found was that the bacterial population that are present in the nose of healthy horses is richer, meaning that there is a lot of different bacteria and more diverse, different types of bacteria present in the uh, upper respiratory tract of the horses. And we found that there is a myriad of bacteria in that cavity, in the nasal cavity of the horse, and they are kept in a normal balance. However, when a respiratory infection with a virus like Hequan herpes virus happen, 
the normal balance of the nasal bacterial population is disrupted, allowing some pathogenic bacteria to proliferate and cause disease. And one of those diseases is pneumonia. So the results of our study help to explain why and how pneumonia develop in horses after a viral infection of the respiratory tract. I understand that's similar to some of the studies in human viral infections. Correct. Not only in humans, but also in cattle. We are every single day learning more about the interaction between virus and bacteria. Usually the virus enter into the respiratory system first, produce inflammation and decreases the mechanisms of defense of the respiratory tract. When, when those mechanisms are not working anymore, bacteria, pathogenic bacteria, are able to colonize the respiratory tract and cause more severe disease. How will this study contribute to investigations on the role of bacterial viral interactions in the health and disease of adult horses? That's a very good question. Our research helps us to understand the dynamic and the interaction between the virus and the bacteria and how this interaction leads to disease. This ultimately will help us to develop new diagnostic tests and new therapeutic tools to reduce the number of horses that develop respiratory disease and to ameliorate the disease on those horses with pneumonia to facilitate the recovery and speed up the time to go back to racing or performing. And I imagine there were some challenges with this study. Yes, this was a, a very interesting study because we were not planning. We organized this project in the middle of an outbreak. So there was a lot of variables that we could not control. So part of the, of the challenges was visiting the farm that was already having an outbreak of herpes virus, but using all the biosecurity measures, uh, we were able to sample those horses and, and uh, compare them with the healthy animals in the same premises. Uh, the other challenge was that we have healthy animals and animals with equal herpes virus infection, but they were located in two different areas of the same farm. So one of the big challenges was trying to differentiate if the bacteria that were present in the, in, in the nasal cavity of the horses was changing because they were located in two different environments or because the virus was causing disease in one of those groups. However, as I mentioned before, the results of our studies are very similar to those reported in humans with respiratory infection caused by viruses and are also similar to those reported in cows or in cattle with viral infections. So we, that support the, the hypothesis or our hypothesis that our results related to the herpes virus infection rather than the difference in the environment that those horses were located. What are the potential practical applications of your research for the horse owner? So for horse owners, this investigation helps to understand the dynamic of herpes virus in the farms that are experiencing an outbreak. This study demonstrates how fast the virus spread in the farm, how many animals can get affected at the same time, and that the disease can have fatal consequences for the horses. Uh, some horses can die because of the neurological, but the severity of the neuro neurological signs, or some pregnant mares can suffer from abortions. So the result of our study and our investigation also show that if a farm is experiencing an outbreak of equine herpes virus, owners should check temperatures for all horses at least twice a day, because if they, if they check once a day, they can miss some, some fevers. 
and they need to keep a log of these recordings. If owners detect an animal with fever, they should look for advice from the veterinarian to determine if uh, testing for herpes virus is recommended or not. So other practical tips are that if the owner handle a horse with herpes virus and don't wash the hands or chain clotting, the infection can be transmitted to other horses, which we believe was the uh, a big risk factor in the development of the outbreak that we were reporting. Also, for owners that are detecting horses with fever at the farm with respiratory signs or neurological signs, and they are suspecting equine herpes virus, they immediately need to notify the veterinarian and do not move the horse or the horses in an, to another farm or to another uh, event. Uh, they need to alert other owners that had horses in the same premises, and they need to call the veterinarian to make a plan about testing and institute biosafety measures in the farm. And um, some other tips that, uh, that we can offer to owners if they are not necessarily experiencing an outbreak of, of herpes virus, but uh, there is horses coming from an event to a farm or new horses are introduced to the farm, they should isolate those horses when they return to their home facility. And isolation requires housing them away from other horses. So for example, the horse should be placed in an area where there is no contact with other horses, using different dedicated equipment to feed, to clean, and work with them. And always very rigorous hygiene procedure for horses handlers, washing hands and changing clothes. It is also recommended that if a new horse is introduced to the farm or a horse that was in an event when it has a contact with several horses, they need to go in isolation and this isolation should be done for 21 days with or without fever. The animal should be 21 days uh, isolated. If that horse that is isolated develops fever, they need to contact the veterinarian to make a plan about testing for equine herpes virus and to institute new measures for the isolation of that horse. And finally, remember or yeah, remind owners that if a horse develops a fever and is found to be sharing equine herpes virus, then the level of risk to other horses on the premise increases significantly. So affected farms should work closely with their veterinarian to develop a targeted management plan for the situation if that develops. Okay, those are all great biosecurity practices for both traveling horses and uh, horses that are, that are being reintroduced to their barn, um, especially the two times a day temperature taking. Yes. I know a lot of people would just do one, so. No, they can miss it. Good, yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gomez. In closing, is there anything you would like to emphasize or sum up? First, uh, thank Equal Well for all the opportunities for, for, for faculty at the university to be in contact with horse owners and the industry. And finally say that faculty at the University of Wealth and the Ontario Veterinary College are committed to provide a new research that leads to a better well-being and welfare for our horses.